It's a tremendous honour to be here today for Jay and our friendship stretches back um, years and years and years now because he first wrote to me when I was presenting a series called Railway Walks for the BBC and he was touched by the series and became very engaged and now of course we all know why. He talks about his prospect refuge theory which is really a way of saying that uh, aesthetic appreciation has got psychological foundations. And everyone, I think, was conscious of prospect before, that you either came to high points and got wonderful views, but more significantly, you made prospects. So you, you made places from which you could look out. For me, obviously, how everything looks, the visual aspect, of all of these landscapes is very, very important. I'm a television presenter that, that specialises in, in outdoor television programmes and we rely heavily on our interpretation of what we're looking at, what I'm looking at on behalf of the viewer, what we see, that view, the beautiful landscape. Um, and I think Simon has done a tremendous job in capturing the variety of landscapes, the differences in, in all of the landscapes. In a way, it's almost more of a book than an exhibition. Um, there's a lot of reading to do in it and people aren't perhaps all that used to doing that in photographic shows. So it's a slightly different kind of exhibition for, for that reason. We're sponsoring the, this event because it is a platform for many of the things which the Landscape Research Group believes in. I suppose largely because of Jay Appleton. Having Jay here is in every sense an unexpected pleasure. So Jay Appleton. I didn't altogether expect to be here, to tell you the truth. And in 94, perhaps I didn't expect to be around at all. <laughs> <laughs> By prodigious effort on the part of all sorts of people, I have managed to get down here. When I was 90, I acquired a new girlfriend. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when I was 90, I... I think you were younger than that, actually, Joe. I think you might well, have been late 80s. <laughs> <laughs> that's, if you, if that's your recollection. I'm not going to call them. <laughs> Good evening everybody. It is a real honour and a privilege to be here this evening to re-present uh, Jay's ideas and thoughts uh, about landscape um, to new audiences and to new generations. Jay Appleton is unmistakably, everyone in this room I'm sure will agree, a brain to be reckoned with. From his seminal work in 1975, The Experience of Landscape, through to the revival of cultural geography as we know it today in this country but there are others far more qualified to discuss uh, those merits uh, than I. So I'm here to add a little personal note, really, uh, to the night. The exhibition opens with the question posed at the beginning of the experience of landscape. What do we like about landscape and why do we like it? So I'd like to ask, what do we like about Jay Appleton and why do we like him? <laughs> it actually quickly became apparent that we had things in common. Not least because it turned out that some of my photographs really did fit with the ideas that, that Jay had and continues to, um, continues to promote. And the thing really was that I just felt instinctively that prospect refuge theory was true. Well, I think it's fantastic, really, because our father has been, this has been his life, really, his academic life for 40 years. And of course the really incredible thing about him is he's actually, he seems such a quiet, charming individual, but he has a stubborn streak. I suppose it's drive and determination would be the positive way of putting it. And he convinced the doctors and the consultant that he wanted to go to London. <laughs> Just to have somebody like Simon come into your life and reinvigorate yourself has been absolutely brilliant. It's an object lesson in mental strength, the fact that Dad's here, because if he could keep going long enough to be here, then he'll dig deep enough because this kind of event is totally what stimulates him. And that's the really positive thing, isn't it? It's about the relationship with people, encouraging people to make the best of their own lives, not 
forcing your own ideas on other people, but encouraging people to engage with ideas. It's also nice to be able to say about your dad that he's a very, very special person. <clears throat> I know that everybody there would agree with you, unquestionably. So that's, that's pretty cool, as they would say. <laughs> you agree? Yeah. 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 I think he's the contemporary theorist, really. So in the 18th century, there were various theorists for the English landscape movement, and I think he is our theorist. <laughs> so, in fact, there's one message I would like to give it. Don't, don't, don't give up. <laughs> you still potential life, even in an old man like me. <laughs> but I really am terribly grateful to everybody who has come together to make it possible. Dreamscape. Landscape is such an all-embracing thing. It covers land, it covers sea and sky. We can define it as encompassing the world as apprehended by the eye. But as we go about our daily lives, making a map of what we gaze upon, only a little part of it survives. The rest is destined for oblivion. So when our waking selves are safe in bed, our sleeping selves are soon at play ferreting through those scrap heaps in the head to redeploy what's left of yesterday. Out of our semi-conscious memory, we build a semi-replicated scene, bringing to life a new reality, a kind of parody of what has been. Why is it then I always seem to find, comparing dreams with actuality, those dreamscapes processed in the dormant mind more charismatic than reality? Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Jay Appleton. Thank you very much, dear. <laughs> there is strange comfort in a darkening wood that smells of secrets like a child's retreat. Dimly perceived, more dimly understood, it sets a stage where fear and safety meet.